Alright guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Iceman Third ID, your host for this episode. <clears throat> a lot of big things to talk about. A lot of big things to talk about. Day one patch. Some news just came out from uh, Hello Games on their on their dev notes on their website. Okay, might as well have been like a uh, a press release because I mean everyone's descended on this news and it's going super viral so I'm gonna kinda talk to you about that I wasn't even planning on making another video until No Man's Sky came out but I gotta make this video by the way in the background this is Neverwinter it's a free game on uh, PS4 it's a PC port of uh, Dungeons and Dragons game uh, Neverwinter I have fun with it um, and I haven't been able to put it down for the last couple days so uh, you know hey it's free check it out not that I'm getting sponsored by Neverwinter or anything I just I've had fun with it, so check it out if you want to have fun with it. Hit me up on PlayStation. Um, so, first of all, I pre-ordered the game. Now, after now, back in the day, I was a Call of Duty fanboy, and after Modern Warfare 3 came out, I said I'm never pre-ordering anything again. And then No Man's Sky comes comes along. As soon as I got the money, I pre-ordered it. As soon as I got the money, it was like yesterday. So. Uh, pre-ordered the game. I get. I guess with the pre-order, you know, you get a, you get a ship, get a little bit of money, and and stuff like that, and yeah, it just helps you start off a little bit. So I'm gonna be starting off with the starter ship, that that one that I told you I was gonna get rid of, like right off the bat. Hopefully, I won't have to because I'll have the I'll have the starter ship instead of the life pod. So that's good. Now, this update is huge. It's gigantic. It's ginormous. And I'll bring it up, and I'll I'll read it to you. And uh, there's some there's some things I think that that nobody's really thinking about yet. And there's a couple things that hasn't been said in the patch notes that I'd already planned on talking about, but weren't in the patch notes. One of those things is land vehicles. Um, another thing is is there more than one galaxy? You know, a lot of people aren't thinking about that. Things like that along those along those lines. But I'm gonna bring you up these uh, patch notes. This will be update 1.03. This is from Sean Murray, August 7th, 2016. He says, Update 1.03. When we went gold five or six weeks ago, we posted on Twitter. And literally every reply was like, Hope you guys are going on a nice holiday. Some of us have, but I didn't want to. Not yet. I pictured myself somewhere staring out the window thinking about this game I've been working on for five years. We're under pretty intense spotlight right now and hopefully it's easy to imagine how hard it would be to switch off from that or how deeply we care about people's first impressions of the game. So, um, reading on here. It will be uh, available Monday. Uh, for press release and review once it exits submission and on launch for the public on PC and PS4. We expect future updates like these to continue to be free. So that's great. All these updates that they're coming out with are going to be free. So that's good. Now it says for 99.9% .9 of people, all you have to do is install an update before you get begin to play. So you install the game, you update it, you can play it. Um, if you had an early copy somehow though, Damien, I don't want to copy uh, Bicycle Walrus here, but I mean, that's it's the truth. Damien's the, the original leaker, but this goes for everybody else too, just not Damien. Uh, you save your game, uh, if you had an early copy somehow, you save your game, your save game will technically work post update, but you will miss out on new content and experiences if you don't delete your save before updating should be obvious why from the notes below. We highly recommend deleting your save if you have played uh, before updating your game. We won't do this in the future, but it's a day zero update. And that's why the title of this is the day zero update, because that's what they're calling it. You know, traditionally this has been like uh, day one update, that's what they usually call them, but I guess since 
so many people got the game early, this is really a day zero update. They're going to reset all the servers uh, today. They reset the servers, then Monday they're going to reset the servers. It says, uh, beware these notes contain some spoilers, which I don't think it's too spoilery. I think it's really exciting. It says, the three paths. There are now new unique paths you can follow throughout the game. You must start the game on a fresh save with the patch as early uh, choices have significant impact on what you see later in the game and the overall experience. So what they're talking about is like, um, I guess there's going to be more than one ending. You know, there's more than one path that you can go uh, down through the story now instead of just the, the one path that, you, that people were playing in the demo version, which is out there. Diversity. Creatures are now more diverse in terms of ecology and densities on planets. So, diversity of density. That means that you could run on uh, across planets with no life whatsoever, or you could run into planets with just packed, just chock full with life. And I think that's pretty cool. Planets. We've added uh, dead moons. That's awesome. That's something that everybody's been asking for. Like, we want dead, lifeless moons, and I think that's so cool because you land on one of these moons. There's no atmosphere. There's no life. There's no, there's no nothing. It's just man, it'd just be so creepy. You just look up into the stars because there's no atmosphere to hide the the night sky from you. I think that'd be really neat. Um, low atmosphere and extremely hazardous planets. Extreme hazards include blizzards and dust storms. Blizzards. That sounds pretty cool atmosphere space nighttime and day skies are now four times more varied due to new atmospheric system which refracts light more accurately to allow for more intense sunsets that sounds pretty that makes for some really good screenshots uh, planet rotation uh, play testing has made it obvious people are struggling to adjust to this uh, during play so it affects uh, its effects have been reduced further so the planet will rotate as fast which is I think that's kind of good because from all the gameplay footage that I've seen the pl the planets rotate so fast it's like day night day night day night you know not that fast but just fast enough to where it's kind of uncomfortable you know terrain generation caves up to 128 meters tall are now possible geometric anomalies have been added Underwater erosion now leads to more interesting seabeds. That's cool. Ship diversity. A wider variety of ships appear per star system. They are available to purchase. Cargo and install technology are uh, now vary more, and ships have more unique attributes. So, more unique ships per star system, more unique ships in general. That's cool. Inventory. They've revamped the inventory system, which is good because a lot of people were complaining about the inventory system. <clears throat> Ships inventories now store five times more resources per slot. So instead of the, I think it was 100 uh, carbon that you could store in one slot, that'd be now 500 carbon per slot. So now you can carry a lot more stuff in your ship. Uh, suit inventories now uh, store 2.5 times more per slot. This encourages exploration and gives freedom from the beginning. We're probably going to increase it this even further in the next update for people in the latter game phases and allow greater trading potential. That's pretty neat. Greater trading potential. That's always awesome. Trading. Trading is deeper. Star systems and planets each have their own wants and needs based off uh, galaxy economy. Observing these is key to successful trading. We still, uh, we're still working on adjusting this based on how everyone plays, but all trading values have been replaced across the galaxy, giving greater depth. A bunch of trade exploits were uncovered and have been removed. So, if you were thinking that you were going to uh, just get this one commodity and just trade it, trade it, trade it, and make a bunch of money and get to the center of the galaxy, they've removed a bunch of exploits so you can't do that anymore feeding oh this this is pretty neat creatures uh, now have their own diet based on a planet uh, and climate feeding them correctly will yield different results per species such as mining for you protecting the player becoming pets alerting you to rare loot and pooping valuable resources 
pooping valuable resources. So, I guess you, you feed, like, this little dog you got following you around, or... You know what I think would be cool? I think it'd be neat to have, like, one of these giant, like, Godzilla-type monsters that you feed, like, a few chips or something, and that now he's following you around, protecting you on your planet. You know, you're just going around the planet, and you get this big, giant monster following you, protecting you, like, yeah, mess with me now, dude. Alright, survival. Recharging hazardous protection requires more resources, making shield uh, shielding ha uh, shards useful again. Storms can be deadly. Hazardous uh, protection and suit upgrades have been added. Liquids are often more dangerous, so they're adding a bunch of new stuff here. That's awesome. Graphical effects. Lighting and texture resolution have been improved. Shadow quality has doubled. Temporal uh, anti-aliasing didn't make it in time, but it's so close. So, a lot of people complain that the graphics don't look next gen or whatever, but the graphics are getting an upgrade in this next, uh, in this next update. Balancing. Several hundred upgrades have had changes. Uh, many exosuit and ship, but also weapon. New upgrades have been added, so that's awesome. Combat. Auto aim and weapon aim have been completely rewritten to feel more gentle in general, but uh, st sticker, stickier when you need it. Sentinels now alert each other if they haven't been dealt with quickly. Quad and Walker AI is now much more challenging. Even I struggle with them without a powered up weapon. Space combat. Advanced techniques have been introduced, like brake drifting. That's cool. That's awesome. And critical hits. That's awesome. Bounty missions and larger battles now occur. Pirate fr frequency has uh, been increased, as well as difficulty depending on your cargo. So that's awesome. So it's, it sounds like this game is going to get a lot harder and a lot bigger, which is great, because and a lot more diverse. So this is like the game that I always wanted to be. Exploits. Uh, infinite warp cell exploit and rare goods trading exploit, among others, are removed. Uh, people using these cheats will be we're ruining the game for themselves, but uh, people are weird and can't stop themselves uh, Stability Foundations for uh, buildings on super large planets Resolved several low repro crashes in particular when the player warped So I've seen that a lot on the uh, gameplay footage right now that I'm looking at a lot of times when players warp the game will, clap, will crash but it says here that uh, when the player warped further than 256 light years in one session uh, this was only possible due to a warp cell exploit so that warp cell exploit's gone and the crashing problem is solved so that's cool space stations interiors are now more varied bars trading rooms and hydroponic labs have been added that's awesome networking avail Ability to scan star systems other players have discovered on the galactic map. Increasing the chance of collision. That means this is going to increase your chance of finding somebody else in the, in the universe. That's awesome. Ship scanning. They've added ship scanning. Um, flying over terrain. Uh, you know, we've seen in, in the previews or in the trailers, we've seen um, pop-in and shadow artifacts uh, that... You know, generate, you know, the terrain generates real slow, so you'll see pop in, and it kind of takes you out of the game. It kind of ruins your immersion. So, they've they've done something with that. Generating speed has increased twofold. Planets with large bodies of water will be targeted in the next update. That's good. So, writing, writing. The Atlas Path has been rewritten by James Swallow, the writer on Deuce X, and me. I think it speaks to the overarching theme of the player freedom more clearly now. Early mission texts have been rewritten to allow multiple endings. So that's awesome. Now check this out. This is the craziest thing I've seen on here. It says, where is it? Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, uh -huh. here it is. It says, next up, we're adding the ability to build bases and own giant space freighters. Temporal AA, uh, AA which is anti-aliasing, and my own new cloud rendering tech should be coming soon, too. It will really change the game again and enhance it visually. This is awesome. I mean, imagine, 
All right, so you've got your own giant space freighter, right? Well, you can't, I mean, could you land on a planet with a giant space freighter? I think you could crash into a planet with a giant space freighter, but I mean, generally giant space freighters just stay out in space. So I think what you might have to do is you take your small little ship to and fro the planets, dock it in your space freighter, and then fly off with your with your little ship in there, and then you can just get in your little ship and take off. You know what I mean? That oh, been, that'd be super awesome. And let's say you build a base, and now you've got pets like these giant, huge pets that are protecting your base because they're protective of you because you feed them. You know, man, that'd be awesome. And so here's one of the things I think is gonna is gonna happen. Right? I got the hit. I got the hiccups. Here's one of the things I think is going to happen. Is I think that as we get closer and closer to the center and things become more and more varied and and we get closer and closer to one another, I think that somebody's going to find like a jewel or like a diamond in the rough, like like this planet that's just awesome, that's got all this life on it and all these resources and and it's really like just this planet like it's like one in a million type planets right it's going to get out on youtube it's going to get out on the internet or whatever or through social networking or whatever that hey there's this planet you got to come check it out and you're going to end up with like three thousand people all building bases on this one planet and there's going to be like huge freighters just orbiting this planet you know that'd be so awesome that'd be so neat and i think another thing that we haven't seen yet and he hasn't even talked about it yet but I've seen pictures in their art design of land vehicles so let's say you you build a base and then you build a land vehicle now you can explore the planet you can fly up to your super space freighter you can invite friends over to over to your your base they can chill out hang out and man that'd be awesome I mean that's that's not how they want us to play the game necessarily but that'd be pretty neat then there's another article here from uh, I think it's uh, not patreon who is it let me see here it is polygon it says and this is from a this is from an indie developer and I thought it was pretty interesting and you now a lot of indie developers I play a lot of PC games that have come to console as you can tell by this game here you know this is a PC port that came to console but I think what a lot of people don't realize is when you port something like this to a console a console a PC is designed to run newer games, but you have to constantly upgrade that PC. The reason why people buy consoles is because they don't want to constantly upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. And because if you're making me a product, it should just work. You know, when, if I, when I put it into my system, it should just work. I shouldn't have to buy a new graphics card. I shouldn't have to uh, see if my drivers are all up to date. I shouldn't have to do all this. You know, with console, there's a quality assurance there where if I stick it in, it's going to work, period. I don't have to be some computer genius or I don't have to be, you know, the Han Solo of, of computer manufacturers, you know, in-home computer manufacturers to run a game. You know, I, it just should, I just put it in and it works. Well, that's why people buy consoles, but that's what make, also makes it so hard to port PC games over to consoles because now they've got this whole big extra checklist that they have to go through. And this is what he has to say on that. This is from uh, Rami Ismail, and he claims to be, I guess he, he writes for Polygon and he's an indie developer. He says, uh, No Man's Sky didn't send out review builds because the game wasn't done. No Man's Sky gets leaked by resellers breaking street date. Polygon, Kotaku, and numerous streamers obtain a copy before release date and play it. No Man's Sky developer and the platform holder both say that the game isn't final. No Man's Sky developers show a uh, change list that for the day one patch to stop nonsensical discussion about the build that wasn't meant for the public. News hits, No Man's Sky is getting a huge day one patch that is going to fix many issues. Okay, so he says here's what's going on here. I want to talk about day one patches but I don't want to talk about No Man's Sky blah 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 he says that he's signed a bunch of non-disclosure agreements and, and thus, stuff like that and he doesn't want to he doesn't want to step on anybody's toes he says uh, all you need 
uh, you also need to realize uh, a lot of what I'm about to discuss, blase, 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 uh, most of these things have been mentioned before in public discourse in some blase, blase, blase. Alright, so when you make a game for console, no matter which one, you have to realize that system developers and platform holders uh, are dealing with uh, weren't built for 2016. These systems are legacy systems built upon legacy systems built upon legacy systems. It's like the system you are uh, you were forced to use at your day job if you ever worked in retail, stock, or booking systems, or any checkout. Uh, many of these systems interface closely with bureaucracy and console technology, and instead of radically changing how systems work between generations, uh, a break uh, and breaking everything at the console launch, console platforms tend to try not to break things that work, which is good and bad. Uh, now, what what you have is in in the console world is uh, what they call a certification process, You're like. Um, prison architect that just came out had to go through a certification process to go to Xbox or to go to PlayStation uh, and it's basically what it is it's it's a big checklist it's like a thick book of checklists and it's it's like a bureaucratic failsafe that keeps developers in line and producing the games it's like okay well if we're gonna put our quality stamp of approval on this and tell people that it's going to work right out of the box then these are the checklists that you have to go through right devs like to call this quality assurance process and i'm reading again cert and no matter what developer you ask you'll find most developers understand why it exists and we all really appreciate all the people working uh super hard to ensure our games are working right but we tend to all hate cert what you have to imagine when it comes to cert is a giant book of check boxes there's an absurd amount of them, and they could uh, be different not only uh, per platform, but per territory. For example, European build has different certification rules than a US one, requiring differences between the two, and sometimes even between a patch, a DLC, and a release version. Some of these make a lot of sense. Don't crash, and some, like, don't crash, that's one of the checklists, uh, which, that makes sense. And some of them are reasonable. You know, if you leave the main menu open for 24 hours, is the same? Is the game still smooth? Um, and some of them are just obscene. Like if you rapidly plug and in and unplug the controller, does the game know what to do? Uh, but like, who would do that? You know, some of these are enlightening. Your game needs to figure out what controller the player is assigned to, thus requiring the press uh, button to start screen only console games still have and some of them are just headaches like don't put UI in the outer 10% of the screen unless you are unless you use one of those how big is your screen interfaces uh, some are legal uh, in any it, like uh, parental control activated or is the profile under the allowed age for gameplay if so did you disable the required functionality blah 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 so this is the type of thing that developers are dealing with. So what you end up getting is developers will make a build of their game that they know that they can certify, right? Like, okay, this build right here is certifiable. We got it. But then the game isn't necessarily finished, right? So that, hence, here comes the day one patch. So let's say three months before your game comes out, you want to certify your certify your game. Well, you come up with the build of your game that you know you can certify. That way, you don't have to keep on. Oh, like if one checkbox isn't isn't checked, then you have to go through the whole process again and recertify your game, recertify your game. So just build one that you know you can certify. That way, you only have to go through the certification process once, and then when day one hits, you've got another update that you can then certify through the update process and so that's what that's what a lot of game developers are having to go through for these consoles and that's why you see a lot of day one patches it's not because they're lazy or it's not because um, you know they found a bunch of bugs that they had to fix or anything like that it's just the fact that the certification process is such a bureaucratic nightmare that 
they opt for the easy quick way that I mean none of it sounds easy or quick but I mean the alternative is much worse you know like if you if you tried to certify your game a week before release right what if it doesn't get reserted and then you've got to make an appointment to then recertify again well your appointment for the certification board or certification people or department or whatever you're going to have to go through might not be for two weeks so now you've got to delay for another week just to get it certified and then you've got to print all the, all the discs that's another thing that takes time you've got to you've got to print the discs you've got to you got to burn all the discs you got to get packaging you have to manufacture these things so that takes time so realistically uh, a developer just can't wait until a week before the game comes out to finish the game you know it, it, it just it just can't be done like that you know um, and so that's what I think you know they've, they've made all these the the game that people are playing right now if you if you got it early is the original like certification we went gold we can start printing discs that's what going gold means is we can start printing the discs we can start manufacturing the product um, and but that's not the final game you know I mean they've got to print the discs at some point and you know a month or two before the game is supposed to release the better but hey guys you know if you like this video leave me a like if you uh, didn't like it dislike it subscribe to see no man sky videos when it comes out i'll see you tomorrow night at the uh after the midnight release i'm gonna download the day one patch and then uh we're gonna get started on this thing make some videos so uh see you guys later this video was brought to you by sunshine